What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on with the capital structure chapter. We're now going to talk about the M&M Proposition 1 with the case where there are no taxes. Now, these propositions that we're going to go over in the next few videos, they're named after two guys whose last names are Miller and Modigliani. But instead of continually mentioning their last names, it's easier to just say M&M. So that's the way I'm going to be referring to these propositions in the next few videos. So as a review, what we showed with homemade leverage in videos previous and in a world with no taxes, the value of a firm is independent of its capital structure. What we showed was if we take the same company and change its capital structure, so here are three examples of taking the same company and changing that right side of the balance sheet, well, notice how that left side is still going to stay the same. The asset value is still going to be the same. It's just the mix of debt and equity is changing. So in this case, the company is all equity finance, but maybe they want to change their debt capital structure to have 20% debt or to have 60% debt and 40% equity. But no matter what happens with that right side, of the balance sheet, that left side is still staying the same. But no matter what happens with that right side, that left side of the balance sheet, the value of the assets is still staying the same. The assets are still going to produce the same income for this firm, no matter what their capital structure is like. So all three examples of these balance sheets are for the same company and the value of the company is the same in all three examples again just the capital structure is different so what we can conclude is the value of an unlevered firm which is a firm that has no debt is the same is equal to the value of a levered firm so whether this levered firm has 20 percent debt or 60 percent debt or anything in between zero and a hundred no matter what the leverage is, the value of that firm is always going to be the same. And sometimes you'll see this in uh, short form. So like value of an unlevered firm, they might show as like V subscript U. And the value of a levered firm would be like V subscript L. But no matter how they show it, this here is basically M&M &M proposition one. And this is, remember, when there are no taxes, all right? So you have to remember that if there are taxes, then this doesn't hold. There's going to be another proposition for that. So when you're dealing with a no tax case, the value of an unlevered firm is always going to equal the value of a levered firm. Okay, so let's show how this works through an example. And we've done a scenario like this multiple times, but a little repetition doesn't hurt. So an all equity firm has a market value of 300,000 and 50,000 shares outstanding. It is thinking of changing its capital structure by borrowing $120,000 in debt and then repurchasing shares. And we're going to ignore taxes. So let's see what happens from the current company and if they go through this proposition of changing their capital structure. So the balance sheet currently of the company is going to be what? Well, notice how it says it's an all equity firm, meaning that there is no debt. So the debt is gonna be worth $0. And it says that this firm has a market value of 300,000. So a market value of 300,000 means its assets are worth 300,000. However, this is a balance sheet. Left side has to equal the right side. If the assets are 300,000 and the debt is zero, that means the equity of this all equity firm is $300,000 as well. And in addition, it says that there are 50,000 shares outstanding for this firm. So this is the balance sheet of the current all equity firm. Now let's see what happens if they go through this restructuring process. So they're going to borrow $120,000 in debt and then repurchase shares. Well, if they're going to repurchase shares, we have to figure out how many shares are going to repurchase. And to figure that out, we have to know what the current share price is. 
and we're not given the share price of this company, but we are given the value of the equity and the number of shares. So what we can do is we can take that value of the equity, 300,000, and then divide it by 50,000 shares. So the share price is $6. So now we know what the share price is, we can find the number of shares that are repurchased. And how do we do that? Well, we would take the amount of debt that the company's taken on, so 120,000, and we'll divide it by that share price of $6. And when you do that, you end up getting 20,000. So that is the amount of shares that are being repurchased. So how many shares are remaining? Well, the company started off with 50,000 shares. 20,000 are repurchased, meaning the equity goes down by 20,000 shares. So there are 30,000 shares now remaining for this restructured capital, um, for this restructured company where they changed their capital structure. So knowing all of this, what's the new balance sheet for this company going to be when they go through that change in capital structure? Well, from m and Proposition 1, in the no tax case, we know the value of an unlevered firm is equal to the value of a levered firm. So that means that the value of this firm is going to be the same value as that firm. They're both still the same company, so the value of the assets is still going to be the same. It's still going to be 300000 What about the debt? Well, the debt now is 120000 The company borrowed 120000 and in order for both of these to balance, what's the equity going to have to be? Well, it's going to be 300,000 minus 120,000, which is 180,000. And now there are 30,000 shares instead of 50 because 20 were repurchased. So this is how the balance sheet would look like of the same company if they change their capital structure where they have $120,000 worth of debt and they repurchase shares. Notice how the debt went up from zero to 120 and then the equity went down from 300,000 to 180,000. But if you add these up, the value is still the same of the company. The value of the assets is still 300,000 in both cases because of M&M proposition one in the no tax case. Now what's the share price of this firm going to be with this new capital structure? Well, what we can do to find the share price as we did here is we could take the value of the equity, which is 180,000 now, and divide it by the number of shares, which is 30,000 now. And when you do that, you get $6, which is the same share price that we had before. And we've mentioned that the share price is constant, but now we can just make it official and add it as an implication of M&M Proposition 1. So you may want to write that down somewhere that the share price is constant. And that's an implication, one of the implications that we're going to go over for M&M Proposition 1. And remember, this is only happening when there are no taxes.